Hey there guys, welcome to Pixel Scope. This is the second part of Krita layer series. So without further ado, let's start it. Let's start with the layer types. So if we go at the bottom and then there is this plus sign and beside that there is the drop down. So there you can access all the layer types. So at first there is paint layer. The paint layer name is self explanatory. You can paint on this layer. So you can either click here to insert a paint layer or you can simply um, press the insert button of your insert key of your keyboard. So every, uh, every option that has a keyboard shortcut att attached to it will be written here on the right side. So I can click that and now it's my paint layer. So I can paint on it. Next in line is group layer. So I can access it from the same location. This is my group layer. Now group layer can be um, said as the folder of layers. Now how can I define group layer? Well it contains other layers as simple as that and its usage is mostly uh, found on the larger complex things where there are thousands of layers. No thousand seems too far fetched. Hundreds of let's say hundreds. So you want your scene to be uh, really organized otherwise you will not keep track of everything that is happening in a complex scene. So there group layer serves you. So in order to get any layer inside group layer all I have to do is click and drag. That's it. And it gets the shape, thumbnail gets the shape of um, depending on the layers under the group layer. So now I can create new layers and it will be created under the group layer. So even if you are on this layer, um, layer, what can I say, on the group layer, you cannot draw anything. And even if you um, make a new layer, then it will be created under the group layer. So in order to get a new layer, which is not under the group layer, you can do two things. You can either be on any layer that is uh, outside the group layer and then click insert or click this or you can uh, select this layer and then click this and it will get outside the group layer so i am undoing that and now i'll paint some masterpieces all right there's the first one and there is a second all right now group layers can be nested and in order to do so i can show you another technique of creating a group layer so i am going to create two layers a group layer out of these two layers so i am selecting these two and then clicking ctrl g so now both the layers are under this layer. This is the group layer and this is under this layer. So all the group layers have a master opacity and then a master uh, blending mode. So group layers are really handy and then there is this tree structure which let you keep the track of what is happening inside group layers how uh, the nesting is how how far so there's your group layer after group layers we have to discuss about the clone layers so clone layers does the cloning of layer <laughs> so it copies the layers that you are you are on when you are selecting the clone layer so if i paint something on layer yeah I gotta change the color color is too hard yeah if I am on this layer 17 and I'm painting on layer 17 so if now I click on the clone layer a layer 18 will be there and it will get the same thing as the layer 17 so it has um, a different icon than the paint layer and if it was not added 
when it was not added this uh, this was uh, semi transparent and when this was added then the both the transparency were added so it became more opaque than it was previously so now this can be done in another way by means of keyboard shortcuts so you can simply click control j and that will do the same thing so now it also says that copy of layer 17 let's talk about the next layer type okay i don't know very well about the next layer type so i'm just gonna skip that for now i have to read about that all right so next is your filter layer now filter layer is a layer uh, which applies a filter non-destructively so that you can uh, change the amount of filter added and even if you don't like it you can go back without using undo so this is the same thing that which is found in the filter menu and you can do the same thing here so I'm clicking ok now this is my filter layer if I decrease the resolution sorry the opacity then it will act the same as it does in the um, in case of the paint layers so this is a convenient way of adding filters and next is the fill layer now fill layer um, is used mainly for backgrounds so it will give you this pattern to put on and then there is the color so in pattern you can select any pattern and then you can just click ok and this same pattern will be repeated and now you can click on this new by clicking on this by default you create a paint layer so now you can just paint above this pattern so apparently painting on pattern is also allowed but it does so in black and white let's talk about the file layer now file layer will let you import an image so you have to click here and then you can select any of the images going to get a leather texture so there is this scaling options so if I these are all self-explanatory so I'm not gonna really bother with that so much so this is a leather texture which I got it from Pixar this is one of those textures from pixel free textures library all right so this is the file layer it just let you get files and it doesn't allow you to paint on them i know another way of getting a file just click and drop and that's it and in this layer you can even paint so it's not a file layer actually it's a paint layer so that's why you can paint <laughs> All right. now let's talk about the transparency mask so let's just start with the usual masterpiece of mine yeah it is becoming a cliche now all right so this is a drawing but I am just considering a drawing so now if you were to erase that drawing how would you do that normally you can just click on E and the eraser will pop up and you just click on it is right but there's a problem in that this is distractive workflow 
if you have erased something it is gone it can never be brought back unless you press on undo but even the undo has a limit so you cannot just infinitely press undo so there's a solution to that which is known as non destructive workflow and we use the alpha masking sorry the transparency masking for that so i can just click on transparency mask and there it is it's done in a black and white manner so black means transparent and white means opaque so if i press d now my palette will be turned into black and white so now black means transparent now if i draw here you can notice that my uh, this is acting as it is being erased but it is not gone in order to prove that i can just change my color to white so i can do that by pressing x because my foreground and background color is uh, black and white so in order to interchange them i can press x so now my foreground is the white and the foreground is the color uh, with which you paint so if i now just notice this is the magic this is the magic i was talking about now this is really effective because you don't lose anything when you are erasing so this is a great way of making lossless painting and this is widely used so if you have the scope just use it let's take a look on the next mask that is a filter mask so if i click here this is almost the same as the filter layer but it has certain um, differences and i'll talk about it in a moment so let's just try with the good old blur so 20 pixel yeah definite overkill clicking on okay now this is now the non destructive part of the masking of the filter mask which cannot be done in a normal filter layer so this will work same as before you can just uh, erase with the black color and then bring back with the white color and the middle portion will also do as expected it will be half transparent half opaque so it is non destructive and it is really recommended for your illustrations because once anything um, goes beyond the scope of undoing you cannot return that you cannot bring that back so this is for that specific reason non destructive workflow is always preferred let's discuss the transform mask next so it will non destructively transform your uh, painting so if i just click, click on control t so it will open the transforming tool and now i can just transform this and then go to this now it is non destructively transform so i don't need to uh, need to click the control uh, not the control z to get back the transformation get back the default transformation it is stored in here so i can just go here and just get it as i wish so it is for that purpose but notice one thing i think this was really interesting for me if i re reduce it the whole area is now reduced and even if you uh, if you paint on here your stroke will also be reduced so the warping is going on and for this layer everything is reduced than the normal size so that is interesting and it doesn't happen in other layers so this was the second part of creda layer series if you found this video helpful please 
like comment and share it with your friends if you're new to this channel please subscribe also i know that this tutorial was a bit boring but in the next tutorial we're gonna make some interesting stuff we're gonna learn a new technique to quickly design any concept art from scratch so till next time